Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 698, is Vasu I'm also going to do name 699, according to the recension that I'm mainly following uh, at the same time. It's also Vasu which is, of course, is pretty unusual to have the same name one after the other. There are many names in Vishnu Sahasranam which are repeated, some more than once. Um, but having one name exactly after the other is unique. <laughs> and uh, why so? I'll get back to that a little later, why that is so. This name is also very similar to a name which came much earlier, Vasudha. Da means giver, and Prada is an intensifier. So the name is very similar. And then what does Vasu mean? And we get then the meaning of the name Vasu Prada from Vasu. What, what, is, what is it that Vishnu gives that makes him the Prada, the great giver of what? Of Vasu. So Vasu can mean treasure. He's the giver of the greatest treasure. It can mean glory, dignity. So Vasu, if it, Vasu is taken to mean glory or dignity, then Vishnu is the giver of glory or dignity. Vasu da is, is the giver of treasure. Well, the best treasure in the, the commentators say is moksha. And of course we will say it's pure bhakti. So that's a, that's a, a specific usage of that. And another meaning, uh, just that like we have the name Vasudeva, one who is everywhere, who resides everywhere. So Vasu, Vasu, place of residence, he who gives, provides the place of residence for all living beings. <clears throat> so to get into this in some more detail, uh, the commentators have said that the name Vasudha gives, means it's, it's generally meaning giving wealth. Whatever we have is given by him. Uh, whatever anyone possesses is given by him because everything belongs to him. And Vasu Prada, the, the intensifier, gives the idea that uh, he gives the best wealth and a very special kind of wealth, a uh, very large amount of wealth, and... Uh, also that he gives it in a special way. Uh, Parashara Bhatta, the exalted commentator, all the commentators are exalted personalities, no doubt. Um, he says that this name means he gives wealth which is everlasting and along with it he gives joy. Just like in the Shastra, we find that um, it's stated that gold is very good, but it doesn't have any scent. And Chandan, which has scent, is very good, but it has thorns. So there's some kind of defect. We can find some defect in everything. In Vishnu, there's no defect. So the, the best gift he gives is the wealth, the treasure, in which there's no defect. Any treasure in this world is defective inasmuch as it cannot give us happiness. I'll buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if you say you're satisfied, but I don't care for too much for money because money can't buy me love. So the real treasure is love. And real love means for Krishna because love in this world is also transient. We love someone, they die, or we die, or we, or we stop loving them in this life. Uh, and it's incomplete. Uh, we can never fully love someone unless we love them in relation to Krishna, because everyone is lacking something unless they're Krishna, or unless they're in relation with Krishna. As we we find that uh, in the description of the, the queens who met Draupadi, at <coughs> Kurukshetra, and they were explaining how they all came to marry Krishna. And one of them, who is that? I can't remember. Was it Badra said that 
Well, I examined everyone in the world. Rukmini examined. I examined everyone in the world, all possible men who could marry me and find they all had some kind of defect. But when I found Krishna, no defect. So Krishna, he gives the best treasure. He gives himself. Ishvara Svabhav. Ah, Bhakti. Nalaya Parad. Bahu Sheva. Alpo Sheva. Bahu Mane. Atta Prajanta Prasad. This is the great characteristic of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That he doesn't take seriously offenses made by those who are his actual surrendered devotees. And if a little savor that they do, he becomes so grateful that he gives himself in return. So, so nice, so nice. We're so fortunate to have the opportunity to think about and serve and discuss, and remember Krishna. So in this sense, we can say that our own most dear Srila Prabhupada is very, uh, Suitable for this, Vasupada, he gives the gift of Krishna. And any guru who gives Krishna, but Srila Prabhupada has done so in an immense way to so many people. So we're so very, very grateful to him, at least we should be. Uh, so Krishna gives wealth, wealth of pure love of himself. Lord Shiva, that question comes up in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Parikshit Maharaj asks, why is it that Lord Shiva, he's so renounced, he's the husband of the, the, the predominating deity of the whole material energy. He can have everything in the material world in that he wants, but he's so renounced, he doesn't even have a, he doesn't even have a house, he just lives under a tree. So he voluntarily accepts so much poverty but his followers are generally very wealthy, like Ravana, for instance, the most very famous follower of Lord Shiva. And Krishna, he's the husband of the goddess of fortune, and he, he lives in tremendous opulence in Vaikuntha, unimaginable opulence, but his followers are generally very poor. And what is the reason for this? Uh, Yudhishthira asked, uh, yeah, actually Parikshit asked Shukadev, and then Shukadev related that Yudhishthira asked the same question to Krishna, and Krishna replied that he deliberately keeps his devotees in poverty. Oh, switch off, get off this channel, you know, in poverty. Ah, but you guy, Krishna gives the great wealth of love of himself. Yes, Yahamanu Grahnami Harishi Tantanam Shanai. Ah, Tato Danam Tyajan Tyaja Swajana Dukha Dukha. What happens, Krishna says, I take away the wealth of my, of my followers gradually so that they, their, their uh, relatives become apathetic toward him and they don't have anyone to love in this world and then all they've got is Krishna. It takes a lot of courage to be surrendered to Krishna. And of course, some people go to Krishna for wealth and they get it also. Artho, Jignasa, the first... Uh, Arto Jignasi, Artati, one kind of person who approaches Krishna is someone who wants wealth. Sarva Kama, Akama, Sarva Kama, Va, Moksha Kama, Udara, Dihi, Ti, Rena, Bhakti, Yogena, Yajeta, Purushankara. Bhagavatam recommends whether you have all this, no desires, desiring liberation, all kinds of desires, someone who's very intelligent will eagerly and very intensely worship Krishna because Krishna can give, give anything. So we, we may worship him for money, but uh, Krishna, he wants to see that we love him more than money. And then he may give money also. We have the story of Sudama Vipra who is very poor and uh, at the urging of his wife went to uh, Dwaraka to see Krishna didn't beg anything from Krishna, but he got fabulous wealth. But he didn't misuse it. <laughs> he didn't become bewildered by that. He Sukhe Dukhe Same Kritva Labha Labha Jayaja. Uh, Krishna told Arjuna, whether you whether you're in happiness, material happiness or material distress, whether you 
you have material gain or material loss, you go with your duty. And the devotee's duty, he knows, is to serve Krishna in all circumstances. And he doesn't get bewildered by having lots of money. So Krishna may give, or he may not give. Again, in Bhagavatam, we find Krishna, he visited the city of Mithila along with so many great sages. And uh, there were two great devotees in particular he wanted to visit. One was the king of Mithila, Bahulashva, and the other was a very poor brother, Shutadev. So Krishna, by his mystic potency, divided himself into two forms. didn't divide himself, he manifested two forms. And all the sages did too. And they both stayed for some time with Bahulashva, who was very wealthy and who could serve Krishna and all the sages with great opulence, and Shudadev, who had to go out begging some grains and some very basic things to give to Krishna and the sages. And Krishna uh, appreciated their service equally, and for Krishna's own reasons, for whatever reason, Krishna kept Bahulashva very opulent, and, and Shudadev very poor, and neither of them uh, were any different in their devotion. They are both great pure devotees of Krishna. So that's the real wealth he gives love of Krishna. And whether you have money or not doesn't really matter that much. Uh, <laughs> if you have love of Krishna, then what else do you need? They may say, well, I need something to feed my wife and children. Okay. They no one say you starve them. But really our goal of life is to love Krishna. And one should do one's duty as a householder. He should, if one has a wife and children, then he should do what is required to maintain them. We're not saying to be irresponsible, but ultimately everything's in the hands of Krishna. Uh, Krishna is Vasu Prada. As uh, Vasu Da, any uh, giver of wealth is not only Krishna. Demigods can give wealth. Uh, even a, a rich man can give wealth a philanthropist. So the name Vasudha is not unique to Vishnu, although it's especially uh, apt in the case of Krishna. But Vasu Prada, then that that's something special. That's something very special. Someone someone gives a beggar a few paisa. Nowadays, of course, they don't accept anything less than ten rupees, but. Uh, you, 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 anyone can give something to a poor person, but who's going to, who can give? Uh, just like Krishna gave to Sudama. Sudama didn't even ask for it. Who can give such wealth? Only Krishna. And who can give, who can give the wealth of pure love of God? Oh, well, that, that's a very special kind of wealth. And, and all the rich people of the world put together they can't give pure love of Krishna. What's what's the use of all their riches? Just a damn headache anyway, unless you use it in the service of Krishna, which most of, most of them don't, and they never even thought of it. They're so unfortunate. They're so unfortunate. All these unfortunate people like Bill and Melinda Gates, very, unfor very unfortunate people because they, they're illusioned by being very wealthy and I'm a philanthropist, but they don't know that the real goal of life is Krishna. They didn't even get that wealth. They missed that. They, they, their whole human life is spoiled. And I'm not particularly targeting Bill and Melinda Gates, but they're very famous as wealthy people and philanthropists. I won't get into discussing their <laughs> the purported dark side of their philanthropism. But <clears throat> the point I'm making is that anyone can be a, well, not anyone, but Rich people in particular can be philanthropists, but Krishna is, they can, they can be Vasudha, be a philanthropist by giving wealth, but Krishna is Vasuprada. There are certain things that he can give, the best things that he can give. He can give ordinary things in, such as money, property, in far greater quantity than any philanthropist can do, or even any demigod can do. And he can also give a kind of wealth which others cannot give. Uh, they don't have it. Yeah, he gives. Uh, 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 giving himself, uh, Parashara Bhatta, who you may remember is describing this whole series of names, particularly in relation to Krishna Avatar. Uh, 
he literally gave himself to David and Master Dave. He he gave himself. He became their son, and then again, of course, to Yashoda and Nanda, and. Uh, in this way, he also gave them another meaning of Vasu is dignity, fame. So he gave them great dignity and fame by giving himself to them. So that's another meaning of Vasu Prada. The kind of fame that Vasudev has is uh, a different quality to that of someone, say, let's say, uh, someone who has dignity and fame. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, we can give that as an example. But Vasudev and Devaki, the, the kind of fame they have is lasting and it's on a much higher level because Mahatma Gandhi, although he was famous as a saintly person, but he's, he's remembered for his political activities. If he'd only been a saintly person, to, to, to use a, maybe a strange terminology because to be a saintly person is a very great thing, but if he'd only been a saintly person wearing simple khadi cloth and holding a stick and not having many possessions, he wouldn't be famous because uh, there are, up to the present day, there are hundreds of thousands of people in India like that, sadhus. So it wasn't, it wasn't his being a sadhu that made him famous, but his, his efforts to remove the British from India, that's what made him famous, his political activities. So he'll be forgotten, like all politicians, and uh, in course of time, they'll all be forgotten. If, if you ask most people in any country, even generally quite well-informed people or intellectual people, who was the leader of this country 50 years ago, uh, they wouldn't be able to say, not, not off the bat anyway. People get forgotten very, very quickly, uh, politicians. Some remain in memory for some time, uh, maybe even hundreds of years, very big ones, but they all get lost in the waves of time. But Vasudeva is the eternal father of Krishna, who has no father, who's the father of everyone, which makes it extraordinary. <laughs> uh, his kirti, his glory, his fame is of a very special quality, and that's given by Krishna. He's famous because he's in relationship with Krishna. And Parashara Bhatta also gives the example of Dasharath, whose fame became expanded by giving, uh, by, by, becoming the father of Rama, and of course, Rama and Bharat and Lakshman and Shatrugda, all of them, but especially Rama. He's especially known, in, and even Lakshman and Bharat and Shatrugna, they're also known in relationship to Rama. So Rama, of course, appeared in the Surya dynasty, the, the, the Surya Vansha, the dynasty coming from the sun. Uh, uh, and there are many great and famous kings in that dynasty, and very, very saintly and amazing personality. One of the most amazing personalities in, in all of the Puranic records. Uh, and there are many, many amazing personalities. Harish Chandra, what suffering he went through, and he kept to his religious principles. Uh, he, he was also in the Surya dynasty, and there are so many... Uh, <clears throat> There, but especially Dasharath is, is best known because of his relationship with Rama. So Rama gave the wealth of himself by being born as his son and also gave him the, the kirti, the fame. So that's another meaning of Vasu Prada. Vasu means wealth, Vasu means fame and dignity. So by giving himself, Dasharath also became glorified in the same way. And we also have uh, Nabi and Meru Devi being the father and mother of Rishabh Dev, Kashyap and Aditi being the father and mother of Vamana Dev. Uh, whenever the Lord appears in a human for human life form, Jamadagni and and uh, Renuka of the uh, Parashuram, so uh, the the same, especially Parashurabhata is concentrating on the Krishna form. But whenever Krishna appears in whatever avatars, he 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 becomes Vasuprada. No, he becomes well. His pastimes are eternal. He's but giving is at a particular point in time, as we realize it within the chronology that we see the world through. 
Ah, uh, yeah, Krishna. Uh, he gives this dignity. There can't be any better dignity if we want prestige. What is more prestigious? Kirti Garna Madde. Kon Boro Kirti. This Ramananda. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Ramananda, right, what's the, the biggest Kirti, the biggest prestige, the biggest fame? Uh, and exactly, I don't remember the Bengali, the, the reply of Ramananda, but he said uh, that uh, without being a devotee of Krishna, there's nothing, there's no meaning to any Kirti whatsoever. So, uh, Another meaning Shankara it is, or, or a Shankaracharya, the uh, probably the most famous commentator on Vishnu Sahasranama. Uh, he gives a slightly different meaning in, in, in as the giver of wealth, Vasuda. Well, he gives well even to those those who are very wealthy where do they get their wealth from Kubert is the most famous wealthy person in the universe not Bill Gates sorry Bill we love you but Kubert is bigger shot than you so uh, Krishna gives the wealth even to him and he becomes fate he becomes famous as a giver of wealth, but he, but that fame he gets only from Vishnu. So this is the understanding. Uh, wealth, treasure, that comes from uh, of Kubera. He gives the, he, the rich people are rich uh, by his grace, and Bill Gates also, of course. Bill, how, how who else is rich in the world? The the uh, I, I guess the uh, Sultan of Abu Dhabi and uh, we have here in India Anil Ambani huh? Mukesh. Mukesh was the, the Anil's and bankrupt and what's his brother's name? Mukesh. Mukesh oh Mukesh is the big one Anil's his, his good karma flopped out if he'd have if he had done what people used to do, which is the young, younger brother takes sh stays with the older brother, he wouldn't be in a big mess. But he decided to go it alone. Anyway, let's, not, let's talk about Krishna. But anyway, the point is that they, they get their wealth and their fame and everything from Krishna. And I'm sure if we see Mukesh Ambani, that he would agree with that because uh, he is from a Vaishnava background. He wouldn't protest that. Good for him. Uh, Shankara also interprets this name to that, that he gives the best wealth of all, which is moksha. Uh, okay. That's very important, actually, because the the... Shankara, his followers, they they accept austerities and and uh, meditation on the nature of reality, what is what is real, what is not real. Neti neti, taking the words from the Upanishads from Ved, from Vedanta. There's a lot of self-effort in the matter of trying to become self-realized according to the Shankara system. But Shankara himself accepts that uh, the giver of mukti is Vishnu. So it's, it's actually a much easier way. If you, even if you want impersonal liberation, that we should accept at least provisionally that Vishnu is the giver of liberation and worship him. And it's much easier to get liberation that way because he gives it. And even, uh, even to those who become impersonally realized by their own effort, uh, that's also, ultimately, not exactly only by their own effort, but by the blessing of Lord Vishnu. And Shankara, he recognizes that. And thus, the, in, in this understanding of the name Vishnu uh, Vasuprada, the name, 
yeah, in this understanding, this name is equivalent to one of the meanings of very uh, well-known and very uh, dear name of Krishna. Mukunda, uh, a prominent meaning of the name Mukunda is Mukti Data, who, who gives Mukti. <coughs> and he, he may, Mukti, there can be Mukti in various ways. Uh, just like in, in Bangladesh, when I was living there in the 1980s, we of, often used to hear of the Mukti Jodha Bahini, which was the Mukti in this sense means freedom from being ruled from West Pakistan. Jodha means soldiers and Bahini means army. So it means the, 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 the Bangladesh resistance army, those who wanted freedom, liberation. The Mukti in this sense meant the political liberation from West Pakistan which is now Pakistan, because their attempt was successful, one way or the other. Uh, so the name Mukti came in, Mukti from, also in Bengal we'd see political slogans written on the wall, so and so, so and so air, uh, something like, uh, I don't know, something like, Razul uh, Chaudhuri Mukti Chai. Mukti Chai, we, we want the, the liberation of so-and-so. I just made up some name. Someone who's in prison, a political prisoner, and they, we, they want his Mukti. So Mukti is used at least in Bengali, in a, not only in the sense of, uh, of becoming free from the cycle of birth and death, but of being free from anything. So Krishna can give... Uh, partial liberation, any kind of liberation. Anything that goes on in this world is ultimately by his hand, not a, bl not a blade of grass moves without the uh, sanction of the Supreme Lord. So that kind of mukti also he gives. And even uh, Krishna himself directly can give and does give partial liberation in the sense that uh, Yamala Arjuna, the, the, the uh, the two sons of Kuvera, who were named ba 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 and, and oh, uh, what are they? I just forgot their names. Uh, Money Griever. I, I forgot their name. Mm. Uh, so anyway, Nalakuva and, 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 and so they they were cursed by Narad to take the form of trees, and. Uh, Krishna released them for, after a very long time from that curse, released them from the bodies of trees, but then again they went to the heavenly planets. They didn't get immediately direct liberation. Uh, we also find there was one snake who swallowed Nanda Maharaj, and Krishna, by putting his foot on that snake, released that Vidyadhara, heavenly being, Whose, uh, whose name was Sudarshan, and he went back to the heavenly world. So there may be partial liberation also. Uh, Lord Rama, uh, according to one story, but not in all versions of Ramayana, um, by, by the Ahalya had become in the form of a stone, being cursed by her husband Gautam, and then Lord Rama put his foot on that and then she was released so she got mukti from that situation there are other versions also i, I believe in the in the uh balmiki ramayana the, the, the stone bit doesn't come there but that's the well anyway the point is that rod ram gave her liberation from that position and then again she she resumed her role as the wife of of uh gotam rishi so Ultimately, of course, uh, the, 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 by the contact with Lord Rama, they get liberation from material existence, all these personalities. But it may be only partial for some time. Uh, Mani Griva Nalakuva, yeah, that's it. Um, regarding liberation, at the beginning of chapter 12 of Bhagavad Gita, uh, because we're discussing the name, uh, Vasu Prada, he who gives mukti, who gives liberation from material existence. 
at the beginning of the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, Arjuna asks Krishna, uh, who is in a better situation, those who worship you as you are, your original person, or in the impersonal, in, in the impersonal way? And Krishna says that, that one can get mukti by the personal method, impersonal method, but it's very troublesome. And he says, Klesho sham avyakta sam avyakta hi That he says it is possible to get liberation by the impersonal, by, by uh, worshipping the unmanifest, but it, it's very troublesome and it takes a long time. And then Krishna goes on to say in comparison, Yetu Saravani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparaha Ananya Naiva Yoga Na Mam Dhyanta Utasate Teshama Ham Samudharta Mrityu Sangsara Sagarat Bhavami Natirat Parta Maya Vesita Chaita Sam. Krishna says, But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service and always meditating upon me, having their minds fixed upon me, O son of Prita. For them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. And then what happens when you're delivered by Krishna by doing bhakti, bhaktiya sanjatiya bhakti. By doing bhakti, we get delivered to the spiritual world. Where we can do bhakti, we can serve Krishna eternally. Now, I'd said that I'd discuss this, why Vasuprada, Vasuprada, why two names one after the other. One reason is, out of ecstasy. Oh, Vasuprada, Vasuprada, bye, I say it again and again. He's so merciful. He gives the greatest bliss, the greatest wealth, and particularly, uh, this name Vasuprana because the, the greatest wealth Shankara says moksha that's only partly true because moksha is only partial in comparison with pure love of Krishna so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he gives pure love of Krishna who does he give it to? Papi Tapi Jato Chilo Dira Hino Jato Chilo Harinami Udharilo Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives to the most fallen, the most sinful, the highest treasure of love of Krishna. The more Mahavada Nyaya, Krishna Prima Pradayate, Krishna Krishna Taitanya Namne Gaura Tvishe Namaha. Rupa Goswami, when he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Prayag Raj, then uh, he prayed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he, Offering obeisances, you are the most munificent. All the avatars of the Lord, of Vishnu, they appear in this world out of their great mercy upon the fallen conditioned soul. But you are the most merciful because you give the highest gift, pure love, pure Krishna Prem, and you give it to the most unqualified, and you give it most munificently, very very freely, without any conditions, and very widely. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radhar Mahima, Prema Rasha Shima, Jagate Janat, okay. He gives uh, knowledge and and the possibility of entering into the pastimes of Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. Uh, the treasure, the wealth that he gives. One word for wealth is Nidhi. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives Ah, Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi. That's the name of a of a literary work by Prabodha Ananda Saraswati, the, the 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 great treasure of the the nectar of the uh, ecstatic feelings of Sri Radha, or in relation to Sri Radha. So this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives. <coughs> Uh, an another meaning we can say that Vasudha compared to Vasuprada is that uh, um, Vasudha, he gives wealth dutifully. Vishnu as the maintainer of the universe, uh, he gives dutifully. If someone does good work, he gets a good result. If he does bad work, he gets a bad result. And the whole system is set up by Vishnu and maintained by Vishnu. And so in that way we can say he's Vasudha. If you get wealth, it's 
due to Vishnu say, no, no, I worked hard. Yeah, but there was, you did some good work and you get some wealth. So you, but Prada, some, he gives dutifully as Vishnu, okay, you got what you deserved. All right, take it. But he gives ecstatically Krishna Prem. That's above and beyond the call of duty. Dutifully, you could say, because Krishna says that he comes, Sambhavami Yuga Yuga. Of course, it's Krishna's great mercy that he comes in every age to reestablish the principles principles of religion by uplifting the devotees and destroying the non-devotees. That's his great mercy, but he said so, he's very dutiful, and he does it, and he comes and does it. But over and above the call of duty, he comes, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and liberally distributes pure love of Krishna, which no one deserves. <laughs> There's no pious activities. Jamma koti sukrita nalabhyate. There are no pious activities we can do which will qualify us to attain the, the uh, Krishna bhakti rasa bhavita matihi, the, the absorption in the blissful uh, remembrance of Krishna and his qualities, the, 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 the ecstatic feelings for Krishna. No one's, no one's qualified. There's nothing you can do. You, you can go on pilgrimage and study shastras and give charity and serve brahmanas. Serving Vaishnava brahmanas is very helpful. Uh, but, but Krishna, uh, Krishna Prem, that, that's actually possible by serving the Vaishnavas. So in that sense, the Vaishnavas, as representatives of Krishna, they're also Vasuprada. So out of ecstasy, we can say, Vasuprada, Vasuprada, say it twice in a row. Uh, Bhishma Acharya, as he was speaking all these things, all these names. Can we imagine how, we, we can't imagine, how we, we can try to imagine how, how ecstatic Bhishma lying on his bed of arrows. That's not very ecstatic, but but it is in another way because what more glorious passing away for a great kshatriya? Uh, he's there, and Krishna's direct. We 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 become very joyful when we recite Vishnu Sahasranam. Can you imagine what it's like there? Where Bhishma is there directly, he's surrounded by the Pandavas and Krishna and Satyaki and all the. And Krishna himself is directly there listening, and and Bhishma's saying it, and and looking at Krishna and saying all these names. And all the depths of meaning, Bhishma knows. He's he's described so many things to Yudhishthira before this. It fills up a massive portion of of the massive Mahabharat. Bhishma's instructions on Dharma, and now just at the end, at the end of all this, and then he comes to the real point, which is glorifying the supreme personality of God in complete ecstasy. Just these these. These these names are pouring out of his of his uh, mouth. The Ganga, he's the son of Ganga, and there's the, the Ganga is f flowing even more than Ganga. The names of of Krishna are flowing out of his mouth in complete ecstasy. Uh, everyone who's there is just complete. Like Krishna's in ecstasy, listening to this. And listening how his devotees glorify and thinking how so many devotees in future uh, by the by the mercy of Vyas, by the mercy of Vaishampayana, they will again and again repeat these names and, and they will be delivered and they'll get his gift of, of moksha and bhakti by hearing this. So there's just overwhelming bliss. Uh, and that was expressed in, in the highest degree by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The, 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 no more no more formality, just leaping in the air, falling on the ground, covered in dust, covered in his own saliva, of just the ecstasy of pure love of Krishna. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to give. Another meaning of this, uh, another way they name Vasu, uh, Vasu Prada can be understood, Satyadeva Vashishta gives the meaning, the dwelling, uh, where we live. So, uh, 
he himself is the place he is that in whom everyone dwells and resides we're all in krishna nothing is separate from krishna we all we all live in him and of course if we take his gift of pure love of krishna then we uh, then we we live in him in a much better way than those who don't recognize that we are living in him we're, we're living in him in the sense that our whole life is thinking of krishna and and consciously uh, living for krishna living in consciousness of krishna and others are ungrateful and they don't even recognize that they're living in krishna and uh yeah all living beings have their their dwelling places so the birds have their nests uh, uh, what is that lord jesus said I, the birds have their the people have their homes and the, the the birds have their nests but the son of man has no dwelling place referring to himself he was a wandering he was like a sannyasi like that uh, aniketa that's one of the qualities given by lord krishna in bhagavad gita that one that one doesn't have a dwelling place. He he, or he may have a dwelling place, but he doesn't identify it with it. He he identifies with that my my dwelling place is at the lotus feet of Krishna. Um, Madhvacharya gives the understanding that Vasu means the wealth that demons have, and Prada in this case he 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 gives the meaning he well destroys it demoniac people have wealth they think i got it by myself we'll find that in the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita i got so much wealth by my own endeavors and i will get more but krishna destroys that uh, another and uh, destroying the demons also he uh, uh, the, destroying the wealth of the demons Madhvacharya gives the example of Bhima, Bhima Sen he knows very well Madhvacharya everything about Bhima because he is Bhima come again so Bhima uh, he killed the demon Jarasandha and it's described that the, the wealth was so much wealth was brought to Dwaraka he took that wealth and uh, Krishna sent the wealth to uh, Dwaraka uh, Madhvacharya also in his Sampradaya, the, by granting the wealth, by, by, or I'm not sure actually who is this from, by granting wealth and knowledge to the, to the gods and the devotees, he enriches them. He makes, knowledge is also wealth. Uh, and by, yeah, this is Madhva, yeah. And by destroying and depriving wealth and power to the demons he maintains the world how does vishnu maintain the world uh, there's always competition between the divine and the demoniac so often the demoniac they become more powerful uh, and they they they're going to upset the whole balance of the universe but krishna he comes as vishnu and sets the thing right again and so many cases of that that uh Bali Maharaj had conquered the heavenly planets. Uh, Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, and then Bali Maharaj, and so many. The demons get the upper hand, and Vishnu comes and sets things right. So in that way, he can also be understood as Vasupada. Baladev Vidyabhushan uh, says that he protects the eight Vasus. The Vasus are also one class of demigods. Uh, uh, Upachari Vasu, very famous. And then... Uh, the, the, uh, among the eight Vasus, one is uh, Bhishma, so he protects them and he gives all opulence to his devotees. Vasuprada, Vasuprada, next name is 700. Hare Krishna. The next name, not 700, is the 700th name. So I'll be happy to have gone through 700 names and looking forward to another 300. Please, all the devotees, bless me that I may be able to speak on all these names. Uh, Hare Krishna.